Hey guys, Luke on Sean's channel. Today I'm really excited for bringing you guys an all new deck profile. This is my Edison Blackwing build that we've played recently enough on the channel. You guys should definitely take the time to take a look at that video. We'll really have the way it turned out. Sean and I experimented with a few different formats that we can really take a stab at and give a give a fair go. So this is the first Edison deck that I've decided to build and try and play. Admittedly, I'm not too proud with the way I played during the match, but I am pretty proud with the way the deck turned out. Blackwing is one of my favorite archetypes. Types. They're definitely really, really competitive in Edison format, so I'm really excited to bring you my take on the build right here, right now. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Starting things off, we run three copies of Sirocco the Don. Sirocco, of course, is very good. He is a level 5, but we can bring him out without using a tribute if only your opponent controls a monster. Which, of course, is really, really great, especially if we're pairing with Black Whirlwind. We're able to normal summon out Sirocco and then search pretty much the rest of her whole Blackwing pool in the deck and or to add it to her uh, hand. Sirocco also has an effect which may come up in some circumstances considering that Edison format plays a lot different from modern Yu-Gi-Oh with the way priority work works. Sirocco has an effect that once per turn during your main phase one you can tire one Blackwing monster you control until the end of this turn it gains attack equal to the combined attack of all Blackwing monsters currently on the field which can work out pretty well if you want to chain block our opponent. So three copies of Sirocco I find to be definitely really really essential for the build. Our second biggest Blackwing is Shura the Blue Flame. Shura of course is really really good. 1800 attack uh, blackwing monster can search most of your other blackwings if normal summoned will black whirlwind face one the field sure has the effect that when this card destroys and points monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard you can special summon one blackwing monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck opens up a lot of the blackwing power pool because we have gale collude blizzard and even Vayu in the deck that's able to be brought out simply if sure is able to just destroy one monster by battle on the field which of course is just really really good so three copies of sure i definitely recommend you maximize it out Three copies of Bora the Spear. Bora I find to be really, really good. I, what I really, really like about Black Wings is how easy you're able to just absolutely storm the field because a lot of them have the effect that if you control a Black Wing monster other than uh, one with the same name as itself, you can special summon it from the hand, which of course is an effect that Bora has. Which isn't the only good thing about Bora, considering he has 1700 attack, he actually is quite big for a normal monster as well. And also if he attacks the defense position monster, you are able to inflict piercing battle damage, which of course is just really, really good. So three copies of Border Spear I find be very, very essential to run at three in the build. Our first limited card, we have Gale the Whirlwind. I think Gale is probably my favorite Blackwing. I just think she's so cool. I'm really, really a big fan of Gale and the fact that a lot of the modern builds doesn't run Gale at all. That's why I prefer playing Blackwings in an Edison format where it's an absolute staple. It is limited, of course, so unfortunately we can only run it at one. But Gale, much like Bora, you're able to special summon it out if you control another Blackwing monster on the field. But not only that, Gale also has the effect that once per turn, you can half the attack and defense of one face of monster your opponent controls. Gale, I find to be absolutely essential to run at one copy in this build. Now, damage step, of course, as the meme goes. Uh, three copies of Kalut. Kalut you definitely want to maximize your copies of. Considering uh, it's 1400 attack, a lot of your other black wings are able to search it out off of Black World Winds. And Kalut is just really, really good for its damage step trick where if Kalut's in your hand and you have another black wing that attacks into monsters or attacks directly, you're able to use Kalut's effect in the damage step that you're able to target that attacking black wing monster and increase its attack by 1400. Which of course is just really really good at getting over problematic monsters, but also is very good at closing out games as well. Considering that Kalut is not once per turn, you can also double up or even triple up on it as well. So definitely run three copies of Kalut, I find to be absolutely essential for the build. To be quite honest, I know a lot of uh, decks run Blizzard at three. I just don't really uh, like the idea of running Blizzard at three. I find it to be a really really good recovery card and not necessarily a combo starter. Blizzard of course is still really really powerful. She cannot be special summoned, but when when it is normal summon, you can target one level 4 or Blackwing monster in your graveyard and special summon that target in defense. Which, considering that Blizzard is a level 2 tuner, you're able to bring out any of your uh, other Blackwing monsters from the graveyard in order to go for some of your synchro plays. But I'm kind of doing my own take on the build, and just with a lot of play testing, I find that only running two copies of Blizzard is pretty much more than enough for what you want. So I only run at two copies. Rounding off the Blackwing pool, we run two copies of Vayu. Vayu, of course, is really, really good. You can't use Vayu as a synchro material if it's face up on the field. You can only use it as synchro material from the graveyard because Vayu has the effect that if it's in the graveyard to remove from play this card plus one non-tuner blackwing monster in the graveyard and special one blackwing synchro monster from your extra deck whose level equals the total amounts of the remove from play's monsters levels which of course is really really 
good, really, really powerful. And it's absolutely great that we're able to do that with our black wings in order to get the monsters uh, going right away. Of course, we run Armor Master and Iron Wing in the build, so we're not shy of monsters that we can bring out off of this effect. But the only downside of that value effect is that the Synchro Summon monster you bring out off of that, its effects are unfortunately negated. Which can be a bit problematic because the Blackwing Synchro monsters we run in this deck have very powerful effects. So that could be a very annoying drawback. Nonetheless, I still think Vayu is essential to run out two copies in this build. I run one copy of Dark Arm Dragon. Dark Arm Dragon, of course, is just a really, really good card. Pretty much a staple for dark decks in Edison. Dark Arm Dragon cannot be normal summoned or set, and it must be special summoned from your hand by having exactly three dark monsters in your graveyard. Unfortunately, you need exactly three monsters in the grave in order to bring them out, which can be a bit annoying considering pretty much all of our monsters in the deck are dark monsters. But I digress, if Dark Arm Dragon is still an option for you to bring out, it's definitely well worth to bring out. He's easy enough to summon if that condition is fulfilled. He has 2800 attack and also he has the effect that you can banish one dark monster from your graveyard and tire one card on the field and destroy a target. Which of course is not once per turn, so if you're bringing them out because you have three dark monsters in your in your graveyard, that means you have three pops on the field off of just this one card alone. Which I find to be absolutely insane, but also considering how priority works we're able to bring out dark arm dragon banish your monster right away in order to get a pop before your opponent can do anything like bottomless trap hold it. So definitely essential to run one copy of dark arm dragon one copy of gores the emissary of darkness i find gores to be absolutely insane i've seen a few builds kind of like don't run it at all or even use it as a side deck option but i just find gores to be really really good at getting us out of tight situations so if you control no cards at all and you take battle damage from one of your opponent's cards, you're able to special summon Gores out. And also, Gores special summons a token with attack and defense equal to the damage that you took. Which of course, is just really, really good at getting two bodies out on the field right away. And considering Gores itself has 2700 attack and 2500 defense, it could be an absolute beast for your opponent to get around. So definitely one copy of Gores, I find to be really, really essential for the build. Unfortunately, semi-limited Black Whirlwind. Black Wings would be undisputed on top if Whirlwind was at three in this format, but it's just not the case. Black Whirlwind, is a continuous spell that reads when a blackwing monster is normal summoned to the field you can add one blackwing monster from your deck to your hand with less attack than that monster which of course is really really good hand in hand with blackwing soroko and whirlwind is able to just search any of your other blackwings at all but considering that all of your other Blackwing monsters have varying attacks, there's a wide variety of Blackwing monsters that you can search off of Black Whirlwind depending on who you normal summon while it's phased on the field. So two copies of Black Whirlwind, absolutely essential. Allure of Darkness is limited, so you only run it at one copy in this build. Lord of Darkness is really, really good at digging deeper into the deck. Considering that all of our monsters are dark monsters in the main deck, we've no problem to fulfill the cost of Lord of Darkness, which reads, you draw two cards, banish one dark monster from your hand. Do not have any dark monster in your hand, you send your entire hand to the graveyard. But that's a problem we never really run into, so one copy of Lord of Darkness. I like to run both Brain Control and Mind Control, just because this is a very synchro heavy deck. So if we're able to just take one of our opponent's monsters and able to use it as material for a synchro summon, I find it to be really really good because not only is it very good removal of our opponent's monsters it's also really beneficial for us as well so that we're able to go further into some of our boss monsters and really help help close out the games as well so one brain control and one mind control I run in the main deck in this build. Spell and trap removal, of course, very, very important. So one copy of MST, it is limited in this format, and one copy of Heavy Storm, which is also limited in this format as well. Spell and trap card removal, of course, very, very important. So one copy of each of those. Going into the trap cards now, three copies of Icarus Attack. Icarus Attack is an insane card, especially in Black Wings. You tribute one winged beast monster, carry two cards on the field and destroy them. All of our Black Wings, of course, are winged beast monsters. So any of our Black Wings are able to fill this criteria. So I definitely recommend maximizing your copies of Icarus Attack. Considering that this is an Edison uh, deck, uh, the battle phase really, really matters. So I like to run three copies of Dimensional Prison. I just think it's really, really important. This is a very aggressive deck. And in case we're also facing down another aggressive deck as well, three copies of Dim Prison, course is really really good at slowing our opponent down. We also run two copies of Bombless Trap Hole. Bombless Trap Hole, when your opponent summons a monster with 1500 or more attack, destroy that monster and if you do you can banish it too as well. Unfortunately Bombless Trap Hole is semi-limited so we can only run two copies of it. If we were able to run three 
I absolutely would have, but that's just the way the format is. Just to reiterate how important spell slash trap card removal is, I would like to run one copy of Dust Tornado. This is a copy I've had since childhood, so unfortunately it is a bit torn, but I'm really excited to see some of these cards that I grew up with actually being played now. So one copy of Dust Tornado, very, very important. I like to run one copy of Compulsory Evacuation Device. Sometimes you don't want to destroy your opponent's monsters because they're able to get some graveyard advantage, so just bounce them back to the hand can be a bit situational, but I find it to be overall really, really good. So one copy of Compulse I find to be very, very important. Royal Oppression is really, really powerful. We only run it at one in the main deck, but if you're siding, you're able to put in the extra copy from the side deck into it. But Royal Oppression is just really, really powerful. It's a continuous trap that can be a bit of a double-edged sword, but you definitely want to be activating this if you have to up your hand in the duel. You basically pay 800 life points to negate the special summon of a monster and the effect of the card that was special summons a monster and destroy it as well, which of course is just really, really powerful. 800 life points isn't an awful lot. You can practically use this card 10 times. Well, nine if you don't want to die. But I just find it to be really, really powerful. Can be a bit of a double-edged sword because your opponent can use this effect on you as well, but definitely be very, very good and essential if you're going into a kind of a grind game where you have the upper hand. Royal Oppression can be very crippling. One copy of Trap Dust Shoot. Trap Dust Shoot is, of course, really, really good and important. It will be sided out if you have to go second, but can be really, really good at getting hand knowledge of what your opponent's playing. So absolutely essential. You activate Trap Dust Shoot only if you you only if your opponent has four more cards in their hand, you're able to look at your opponent's hand and select one monster card in it and return that card to the owner's deck. Absolutely insane card, no wonder it's banned, it will probably forever be the case, but it's limited in Edison format. Rounding things off, the final two trap cards in the deck, probably two of the most powerful trap cards in Edison format, Mirror Force and Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment, pretty much a big no card. When your opponent would summon a monster or activate a spell or trap card, you could pay half your life points and just negate that summoner activation altogether and destroy that card. And Mirror Force, you don't need me to tell you what Mirror Force does. It can be an absolute blowout to your opponent, essential to run one copy to round off this deck. Let's go into the extract now. I like to run two copies of Black Wing, Armed Wing. Armed Wing is very, very good. Synchro 6 that we run this build. It needs a Black Wing tuner in order to go into him, but that's no matter at all. All the tuners in the build are Black Wing tuners. With 2300 attack, it can be very good, it also has the effect that if this card attacks a defense position monster, it gains 500 attack during the damage step only, and also inflict piercing damage to your opponent's life points. Which, of course, is just really, really good. Two copies of Iron Wing I find to be absolutely essential. It wouldn't be an Edison Black Wing build without Armor Master as well. Level 7 Synchro Monster needs a Black Wing tuner to go into it as well, but with 2500 attack, it's absolutely worth it. You cannot be destroyed in battle, and also you take no battle damage from attacks involving this card. At the end of the damage step, if this card attacks a monster, you can place one wedge counter on that monster, maximum one. Then you can remove all wedge counters from your opponent's monsters, the attack and defense of those monsters that had wedge counters become zero until the end of this turn, which is just a really, really cool battle trick. So Armor Master is of course essential to be running at two copies in this build. The final Blackwing Synchro we run is Silverwind the Ascendant. He's a little trickier to go into considering that you need one Blackwing Tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters in order to go into him. But he has the effect that when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can select and destroy up to two face-up monsters on the field with defense lower than this card's attack, which can be very, very powerful. Silverwind the Ascendant has 2800 attack. You cannot conduct your battle phase to turn you activate this effect, but that's no problem at all because popping two in some circumstances, of course, way better than having a battle phase anyways. But he also has the effect that the next time a Blackwing monster you control will be destroyed a battle during your opponent's turn it is not destroyed. But this effect can only happen once. So Silver Wind, definitely very, very good. It can be relatively kind of hard to get your hands on. It hasn't been printed an awful lot, but if you can run it in this build, I definitely recommend running it at one. The other synchros we run are Magical Android. We kind of like to run as many different level synchros in this build as possible. Just any of the powerful generic ones will do. Magical Android is of course very, very good because it's a generic synchro 5 monster with 2400 attack. And also has the effect that during the end phase, you gain 600 life points for each psychic monster on the field, i.e. being herself. So it's a good way to not only have a strong synchro monster with a le relatively low level but also if we're going for time or whatever magical android can of course be very very good at opening your life points too so one copy of her ally of justice catastrophe of course is a very very good synchro as well 
At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a face of non-dark monster, you destroy that monster. Fantastic effect, definitely run it in the build. One copy of Brionic, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Please keep in mind that this is a pre errated version that we need to be playing. So you can actually activate Brionic's effect more than once per turn. Yes, the effect, you can discard any number of cards, target that equal number of cards face up on the field and just return them to your opponent's hand, which of course is just really, really good. This is pre errata so it's a lot easier that you don't need to overcommit. It's a lot more stronger in this format than and it will be in modern day Yu-Gi-Oh! So one copy of Brianna, very, very important. Speaking of uh, pre errated uh, monsters, Goyo Guardian is an insane monster as well before it got an errata. So what the errata really did was just made it harder for us to summon out Goyo Guardian. For nowadays, you need one Earth Tuner and one non-tuner monster in order to synchro summon into him. But before this, you can just use any tuner and any one monster in order to go into it as well, which just makes the character generic and a lot, lot better. He's a level six with 2800 attack, which is absolutely insane. And he has the effect that when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can actually special summon that monster to your side of the field in defense position. Absolutely fantastic effect. Goyo Guardian is really, really good no matter what build you put in Edison. I definitely recommend you run it. One copy of Black Rose Dragon. Black Rose Dragon is of course an incredible nuke the board type effect. Very, very good depending on the situation. So I definitely recommend running it a one copy in this build. Speaking of staples of Edison, Stardust Dragon of course is a really, really good card. Generic level eight has a quick effect that you can tribute this card to negate the activation of a card that destroys another card, which of course is a really, really fantastic effect, especially because Stardust Dragon is able to come back during the end phase of the turn that effect was activated. Definitely a central run Stardust Dragon at one copy in the build. Colossal Fighter is another really good generic synchro that has a recursion effect as well. He gains 100 attack for each warrior monster in the graveyards. Not something we really are able to apply to boost up his attack, but depending on the matchup, he can get up to an insane amount of attack. When this card is destroyed by a battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target one warrior monster in either graveyard and special summon that target. Classified for himself is a warrior, so he's able to revive himself. Definitely really, really good to run in this build. One copy of Thought Ruler Archfiend. If this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you gain life points even that monster's original attack in the graveyard. Also, when a spell trap card is activated it targets a psychic monster and no other cards you're able to pay 1000 life points negate activation and if you do destroy the card thought ruler absolutely insane card for the build the final synchro we like to run is dark and dragon dark and dragon is really really good with 2600 attack he's very powerful but it's also good to know his attack stats because his effect comes in contact with that a lot as well so once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls. This card loses 500 attack and defense, and then you can send that target to the graveyard. So considering that he has 20, 2100 defense, you're able to activate that effect four times, which I find just be absolutely insane. So definitely essential to, to run Dark End Dragon at one copy in this build. And finally, to round things off, Comeritech Forces Dragon. We run Cyber Dragon in the side deck. It's pretty much a staple in all Edison decks that everyone, everyone runs Comeritech Forces Dragon with Cyber Dragon in the side, because you never know what machine deck you're going to be facing against. For example, in the live duel me and Sean played, Sean, of course, uses Ancient Gear build. So Comeritech Forces Dragon was, of course, really, really good at completely wiping the field by simply bringing out a Cyber Dragon and contact fusing your opponent's whole field away. So essential to round off the extra deck in this build. Going into the side deck, as we mentioned, two copies of Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon is semi-limited in this format, so you can only run out of two copies, but that's no matter. He's still an absolutely insane card, essential for the side, not only because he's a really powerful monster, but also for that Chimeratic Force Dragon as well, depending on the matchup. Absolutely essential to run two copies of Cyber Dragon in the side deck. Just for a little bit of protection, I like to run My Body as a shield. I think My Body is a really, really good card. I was kind of torn between running three copies of My Body or three copies of Book of Moon in the side deck, but after a lot of playtesting, I find that My Body just kind of worked a little bit more in my favor considering the amount of board wipes or removal cards people run in Edison decks. So I found my body to be really, really powerful. I definitely recommend running it in the side deck. But if you want to run Book of Moon instead, that's absolutely fine too. Of course, we have the other copy of Royal Oppression. I already said what this card does. One in the main deck and one in the side deck. Depending on what the matchup is, you might want two of them in the main or two of them in the side. It all comes down to what your opponent's playing. So one copy of Royal Oppression in the side deck. I like running three copies of Deck Devastation Virus. I find this to be an absolutely insane card. I wish I played it a little bit better during the live duel, but hey, 
what can you do? I kind of forgot to take in consideration uh, the monsters that Sean will be playing in the build, so deck dev didn't really do a whole lot against him. But for those of you who don't know what deck devastation virus does, is that you attribute one dark monster with 2,000 2, or more attack, look at your opponent's hand, and all monsters they control and all cards they draw until the end of the third turn after this card's activation, you destroy the monster with 1,500 or less attack. This can be absolutely crippling depending on the matchup, but you should learn from my mistake. This does not uh, really affect Ancient Gears. So three copies of Deck Dev in the side, I find to be really, really good, but be careful what you're siding this against. Three copies of Pulling the Rug. Pulling the Rug, of course, is a very, very good card if you're going against something like Monarchs or whatever. It's a counter trap that has the effect that when a monster effect is activated, that activates when a monster is normal summoned, you negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that monster. Just with the way priority goes, all the Monarchs, when they're summoned, they have their effects pop off immediately, especially with priority, but Pulling the Rug is a really good way of stopping the Monarchs from taking full advantage of priority. So Pulling the Rug, of course, Really, really good against Monarchs, but it's also really good against a lot of other decks. I definitely recommend running it in the side. And then finally, rounding things off, three copies of Seven Tools of the Bandit. There is a lot of crippling trap cards in this format. Seven Tools of the Bandit is just a really good counter trap in order to kind of like interact with those. Simply reads that when a trap card is activated, pay 1,000 life points, negate the activation, and if you do destroy the card, 1,000 life points essentially is really, really nothing if we're able to use seven tools in order to stop something like a mirror force, a royal oppression, trap dust shoot, a judgment, whatever it needs to be. Seven tools can of course be very, very good. So that does it for the deck. Please let me know what you guys think. I'm really happy with the way the deck turned out. I'm really excited for me and Sean to play a bit more with uh, some of the older formats such as Edison. We've already had a few GOAT videos on the channel already, so be sure to check those out too. And definitely look forward to more alternate format style content in the future as well. But don't worry, we'll still be doing the more modern stuff too. This is just something that we're trying to shake things up a little bit with for the time being. So thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave suggestions down in the comments too. Sean and I try to read as many as we can. And until then, we'll see you next time. All the best. Bye-bye.